So it's a change. I've seen a day this week. Rather than on being the flat, aye, rather than being on the road, I suppose an opportunity for us, an inflection point almost. You know, I think we've had the channel up and running now for a couple of months, and every week we've been out meeting some spectacular guests, and obviously there's a chance for us just to sit down and maybe take stock and just go through some of the best moments. And how do you aye. think it's been going so far? It's just totally exceeded my expectations, mate. Like number one, what the quality of guests we've had so far. I thought we would maybe get the odd shitty episode at the beginning. I thought <laughs> there'd be one that wouldn't would maybe not work out as well. Or maybe a, a guest wouldn't open as up as much as we'd like, but it's been incredible man. Everyone's been really honest, shared an amazing story and I've been totally entertained in every one we've done. Nah, I totally agree. I think it's amazing that there's so many people out there, uh, you know, when you meet them, ordinary people, but they've got yeah. extraordinary stories to tell and extraordinary gifts. What was your favourite moment so far? Is there one in particular you could nail it down to? Um, I've loved every single guest. Um, they've all been really interesting. I think there's a, a particular favourite for me is the, the Rory story. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> It just it just had a bit of everything, and I could relate to some of the stuff he said as a as a guy who's also been through some struggles in life, particularly health struggles. <clears throat> I could relate to quite a lot of what he was saying, so maybe that's why that became probably my favourite episode so far. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a a really interesting one, and, and as you know, it went on for so long we had to split it into two episodes. They're just we just couldn't cut any of it. I know, I know. It was absolutely fascinating. I think for me, um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed last week's episode, obviously we went along and we met Maya um, and of course it transpired that I ended up trying the Campbell, um, conscious actually that you know we'd done the video and probably in that, that state of excitement we're still learning as we go, yeah. um, we probably never really had that inflection point where we discussed, uh, I spoke about what the experience was like when I'd done the Campbell, so um, I found that you know, it was a really powerful experience actually for me. Obviously, it was just one dot, so obviously the more dots you would get, you know, naturally it's going to have a much more powerful effect on your mm. overall system. But um, for me, you know, obviously the the energy that I felt flowing through me once that dot went on, it was really I could feel the medicine almost searching through my body. Right. It went it was all over like my, my chest, obviously my head, which you could see yeah. in the video, and uh, it was bright <laughs> red, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then all the way down, like, and I felt it actually going right down in my legs, like all Did the you? way down, aye, and then just coming, one dot. Aye, just one dot, and then coming back up and sort of gallon in my stomach, it was, uh, aye, it was pretty powerful to be honest, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and, and I suppose after it as well, like, I felt, probably since then actually, I've, I've really had a real uptick probably in energy, mm. I found as well, um, so it's a really powerful medicine, so I think it's something that we should probably look into much more deeply, like maybe in the future we'll do a, an episode on Campbell, because I think yeah. it's it's definitely something that could help a lot of people. Yeah, and I think it's important just to mention to people who are new, that you normally get more dots and you normally drink a lot of water beforehand, and then there's a, there's a purging, so maybe people were expecting to see some of that purging, Aye, but they didn't course. know you just had the one dot. Aye. But it sounded like it was pretty powerful just for that one. I mean, I was watching you try to figure out what was going on. I seen you were going red and you were speaking to Maya, you were doing this kind of gesture, but I didn't know exactly what was going on. Aye. What, so what were you feeling? I was like, feeling a lot of, um, it was, it was a, a lot of energy probably, is the, the only way I could probably describe it. A lot of heat, you right. know, just naturally travelling through the body and you, you can genuinely feel this stuff coursing through your, your body. Um, Oh, you know, some obviously would say that that's the medicine seeping out the parts of your body that mm. maybe need some help and support, and um, I would definitely do it again. Aye. Definitely. Yep. It's interesting just getting on screen, it's something that I thought maybe, you know, even a year ago, like, there's no way, like, I would have ever done that. Yeah. Um, and when I really think about it, like, what a year it's been, obviously 2020 has probably been uh, a transformational year for a lot of people, Mark. But, for me, obviously, I would say that my journey on this really, <coughs> really began to ramp up probably towards the end of last year, about 12 months ago. For me personally, I f call it spiritual path, call it whatever path mm. you, you want it to be, but I mean, it probably actually kicked off a number of years ago, six years ago, my brother died. Mm. Um, and obviously after that, I probably found, I found myself seeing the world slightly differently. I had some experiences after that. I'm not going to talk about them in depth just now, but in the future I might. 
but I would say that after that I found myself probably starting to view the world a little bit differently right. um, and I was probably tentatively on that path for a period of time until probably about last year I got married, uh, actually it was my anniversary today so um, anniversary. Yeah, 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 no. <laughs> so about maybe about October last year, <coughs> the end of 2019 I had a, a pretty challenging experience, I'd drank too much and um, just I kind of like, lost the plot a wee bit after a night out and yeah. to be fair you know the next day I kind of had a real look at myself and I thought where did that come from? Like, you know, that's not really who I am. In general, I was consider myself to be quite a relaxed, quite a calm individual. And there was a lot of stuff that just came out that, that really caught me by surprise. And, and I thought to myself, that's, I need to, I need to try and understand what that was. But at the same time, I, I feel like that was a changing point for me. I came, I came eye to eye with some, a real dark side of myself, probably. Mm. But in many respects, I think that was the beginning of something more more profound probably happening to me. Um, and probably from about October to March, I felt like things were beginning to change. How I was seeing the world, my outer world started to get more challenging, like more difficult. What I mean by that is probably just that things that maybe traditionally I would have found easy uh, started to feel a little bit more difficult mm. but at the same time I was getting these moments of spaciousness is the only way I can put it what I really mean by that is that I was starting to get moments where like thought wasn't the predominant feature of my, my existence you know like I wasn't being overwhelmed I always feel like we've all got that voice in the head that narrative yep. that's constantly running all the time and it's trying to navigate you through the world and um, and of course that narrative is often based on your past experiences and growing up as a child it's a lens that that often you know I suppose skews your world skews your world is probably the best way to put it and so I started to have these experiences on and off I was meditating more and I was reading more I'd started to you know to read more books like I started reading Ram Dass I started reading Eckhart Tolle uh, and these experiences the reading I was doing the practices I was doing started I think the gradual shift you can call it awakening, whatever you want to call it, but that began to happen, I would say. But I found that I wasn't in the place to accept that at that point. I found that I probably was holding on really tightly. Um, and bearing in mind that when this change was <coughs> happening, I'd just moved jobs, I'd just get married, I'd just moved house. Um, I had a few difficult moments with a, a close friend that I really care about and I really love. You know, some stuff happened. That, that kind of made life a little bit difficult and I was probably experiencing a lot of emotions at that point and then as I said this change slowly began to kind of take effect but I probably it wasn't in the place where I could naturally understand what change was happening but also be in a position to fully embrace it and accept it in my life so I felt like probably between maybe about October till about March time before the pan was the pandemic kicked in, I was probably s slowly navigating my way through it, still trying to hold on to what felt familiar and comfortable, but at the same time growing more curious about this change that was happening inside me. Yep. This shift of consciousness is probably the best way to put it. Did you stop drinking after that? Because obviously it was when you had been boozing, that's when the, eru the eruption came. I was almost like, like that kind of brought all this up to the surface. Did you did you stop drinking after that? To be fair, I'm actually probably not. I'm not a massive drinker, but that yeah. that particular night, I'd, I'd had a lot to drink. Um, because I, I I probably know there's some part of me that knows that too much alcohol does not agree with me. Yeah, same here. Um, but you know, naturally, I probably didn't stop altogether, but definitely didn't drink to the level of excess that you know naturally led to that event. But it's really interesting because I was, by the time the pandemic kicked in, there was a lot of change began to happen in my outer world. There was a lot of like wee bits of feedback I'd started to get for people right. around me, maybe just starting to show and expose some of these patterns that I think were naturally beginning, that naturally probably ran my life for such a long period of time. I suppose one of the major reasons I've probably found myself on this path is because 
I've never, I've, not, I've never had that ability, or in the past, never had that ability to be completely content. Like I was always trying to achieve. Mm. It was always like had to fill. It was like almost like a void that needed filled all the time. Ever since I was a wee boy, just I suppose I played a lot of football, and um, I always had a lot of positive reinforcement around me. You know, like a lot of adults telling me, you know, like you know, maybe reinforcing how talented I was in particular areas when I played football and stuff like that. Um, and I suppose the older I got, my natural vehicle for what getting love, you know, like how I navigated through the world and how I got love is really from really from achieving because yeah. through achievement I would get the love and the recognition that I felt I needed to feel whole. Um, and really when I look back now I really realise I realise that so much of my life I've been creating for that place of lack for that one deep thought, that one part of me that just feels that I'm never enough and that mm. comes from our egos, for, for the ego, you'll never, you're never enough, there's always the next thing, it's always, I always felt like after I left school, I probably was a, a bit of a no-hoper to be honest, when I look back on it, I, I had no like, qualifications or anything and then I went back to uni and I kind of realised that I had a bit of academic ability and suppose that that's where I honed that's where I put my energy and attention mm. because I kind of maybe felt like, you know, if I can succeed here, if I can achieve here, that will give me the satisfaction. And I did, you know, I went to uni, I done really, really well. Um, and I had that satisfaction for a period of time. It, you know, I, I, that buzz you got, you know, I got a first. I was one of the only few people who did. And I thought, that's it, I'm, I've made it. I remember that day I graduated, I thought, I've done it, you know, like I got an award and, you know, but that lasted for about two months no, and then then that sense of that's actually not, quite long for it to last usually I, it's sooner like right what's the next thing because I've no got that sense of fulfillment I thought I would have got so I, so what happened after that I felt like you know you end, I ended up back um you know I get so many things in life I've, I found that the gap came back that sense yep. of lack and so I get, you know, you get into the workplace and of course then my attention then goes to the workplace, you know, I'm then using my my job as my, my vehicle to get love. So of course it needed to be a bigger job, it needed to be, uh, you know, more interest in work, it needed to be more money. And of course, what I've, what I've learned through this whole journey and probably it's taken me to get to this point in my life to recognise that actually none of that really is ever going to fulfil who you are. And only the tr knowing the truth of who you really are can you ever really be totally free mm. and that means to be free of compulsive thinking to be released from the narrative that runs in your head and because as soon as that narrative runs and as soon as the stories that your mind begins to tell you as soon as you buy into them as soon as you believe them that's what then becomes ego um, and i found that in that transformational journey that began you know probably at the end of last year um, and really as the pandemic kicked in, I, I, something deep inside me just said, let go. Mm. Um, I had an experience, actually. Um, I had a really powerful dream. And I know that that's ironic, because also we yeah, covered Juliet. And yeah. what, actually talking to her helped me understand this a good yeah. bit more. And we talked about this off camera, because um, it wasn't something I was wanting to share. But I had a really powerful dream where I removed something from my throat, like, and this would have been the end of March or April time. Yep. And it was like, it was like almost like a plaster and it was black, <clears throat> pure black. It was like, it was horrible. Right. And after that, I kind of felt like I've been so much more open now to just being totally honest. Yeah. Like to tell my story. And I suppose that's where this all came from, mm. is that began to recognise that one of the things that we are really interested in, that I'm really personally interested in, is my own self-growth, um, my own well-being, having a sense of balance in my life, and, and this really powerful dream after that, I, I kind of felt like that was the time when the gloves came off and I just went, you know what, like, I've got so much capability and I've got, I've got this narrative, this story, and I want to start to tell my story now, I'm ready to be more open and I suppose be vulnerable, that's not something the guys like what us for the west of Scotland uh, are really used to saying or, or doing, like, but my whole life, like, I look back, everything I've been creating has been from a sense that I don't feel like I'm enough, 
so I need to get more. And now, the amazing thing about this is, it's like I'm in a place now where I'm so fascinated to see what I can create, mm. feeling whole, yeah, feeling that, like, being, feeling worthy to receive whatever gifts the universe and the world will throw at me, and I know that there'll be difficult moments, but I still feel like more than ever I'm ready to, yep. to experience that. So then, Alan, what, what would you say to some other guy or some other person who's maybe going through that kind of shift that you had, like looking back to the beginning where you, you things erupted, things were a bit chaotic, back then you didn't know exactly what was going on, and it kind of forced you to turn in, what, what would you say to somebody who's kind of going through that rocky part just now? It's really interesting, Mark, I think. I think it's about trying to understand yourself, like to really understand yourself, to know the mind patterns and patterns of behaviour, like yeah. if you're experiencing the same things over and over and over again, there's a pretty high chance you're mm. being ran by your mind mm. or by your subconscious mind. It's really, for me, I can talk openly, I know the reasons why I am the way I am, I've got so much information and so much evidence to show my desire to continue to achieve and to, I suppose, that got me into the place that I was in before. It came for a sense of lack, but everybody experiences it in different ways. Like, for instance, you know, maybe the way that you satisfy your own ego is maybe you need to challenge other people and, you know, you need to try and find a way to come out on top mm. because that's how you've evolved as a, as a young person. Like, you know, you need to try and show a level of superiority over someone. And for me, you know, I've probably found myself in a place where I don't want to be in the life I'm in now, like in terms of constantly just striving to achieve the next thing, the next thing. It's like overdoing rather than being. Um, and now I want to be in a place of, I suppose, awakened doing is probably the best way to put it. I digressed a little bit there, but I think it's about coming back to the stillness, coming back to a silent place within yourself. And just being with yourself, a lot of the time we struggle to, to to stop, like we're always at something, we're always at our jobs, you know, and we wear that a badge of honour, look at me, I'm so busy, oh my God, you know, like that's your, mm. you know, and that's a badge of honour, or you're constantly distracted with your phone, or you're distracted with things going out in your outer world. I think it's about coming in, into yourself, coming into the stillness, meditation can help, mm. breath work can help, uh, cold water therapy can help, anything that switches the mind off for a period of time yep. and allows allows you to just have a bit of silence and a bit of stillness and then I think the answers begin to emerge from there. You begin to pick up on things and and also it's probably easy sometimes you can see things in other people before you can sometimes see it in yourself. Mm. Um, once you start to see something, because a lot of the time the, your world is really just a mirror of what's going on inside yeah. you. So Definitely. what's triggering you, you know, if you're in a you're in your workplace or you're in a relationship and there's a particular issue that's triggering you, you know, you're getting angry at the other person for, there's a pretty high chance that actually that's not really about yeah, that it's other not person. About it's about you, it's yeah. about your own patterns and it's about your own the content of your life and I suppose that my advice would be to examine yourself first. Mm. Don't go and look for all the answers outside. There are techniques which I talked about that can help, but I would say it's more important to be within yourself and take full responsibility because I don't know if you've recognised this, but every guest we've had on, yeah. every single one, <laughs> they've all taken personal responsibility for their health their well-being and their self-growth. Yep. Every one of them. It might be they need healing, you know, it might be they, they've got particular issues they work through, but that is the common factor. Mm. The world outside of you is not going to fix you. You need to understand yourself more deeply, know who you are, and if you know who you are, then it'll be much easier to relate and show compassion to other people.